Well guys, we finally did it. Project C6 has blasted off into the heavens. It wasn't easy, but in the end, my persistence prevailed. Let's talk about it right now on the channel. What's up guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Easy Astro Images channel. The C6 Hyperstar is now in effect. All we need now is some better weather so we can just keep on firing away images. I've got a lot of do's and don'ts that I wanna go over with you real quick in this video. The entire playlist for this project will be in the description below. I highly recommend you check that out, especially if this video is a few months down the road because we're gonna keep on adding to it. There are a lot of little tweaks that we still need to do to get this thing firing off like it should. Besides upcoming videos on the C6, it's literally galaxy season now for half the night. So we are working on some upgrades going on for the RC6. My mount is also giving me some issues, so I've got some tools and some bearings coming, and we are gonna do a full rebuild on the EQ6R. Pretty disappointed that this mount is like a year old and it's already misbehaving, but it kind of seems to be par for the course. So here is the Mighty C6 with its brand new hat on, a nice shower cap from Amazon, working great as a dust cover. And you can see that we are ready to go. This is the current setup that I was using last night after we got everything all set up. We got collimation done, everything working and balanced and running as good as we could. Now this project did not really go to plan. Actually, it ended up costing me a scope, an extra $600. Originally, I did buy two C6 scopes because my plan in the long run was to have a twin Hyperstar C6 photon gathering powerhouse that would speed up my imaging time even more. But I believe I was a little careless in the alignment of my secondary plate and corrector on the first one, which resulted in images like this. That was not good. And I could not figure out how to save it. Obviously, I did not get the indexing correctly on there. I should have been more careful note to yourself. So my suggestion before you start doing any modifications with your secondary corrector plate is to just run it stock and see how things go before you decide to start shimming it and aligning it. Luckily, the second scope that I got was a perfect sample. The whole centering looked great right down the tube and I was just mounted up the Hyperstar and did some basic collimation. We'll take a look at some of that right now. All right, so here we go, guys. This was night one with C61. And after getting collimation dialed in straight into the middle, I was still having like these really weird artifacts on the outside of the edges of the stars. Now you can see that they all are suggesting that we're kind of a little too far away from the sensors, so we should increase spacing. I tried that. That did not fix the problem. Uh, things just kind of weren't lining up the way that I thought they should, despite the fact that if you look down at the, the bore of the scope right here, you can see that everything looks just fine. Defocus stars all had like a, the same kind of like pattern, except it was a radial type of pattern. So I guess you could say they were all not doing the same thing, but they were as you went out away from the field. I was really, really confused as to what was going on because I was 100% sure that I had that corrector plate centered properly, which I probably did. Again, like I said, from taking it out so many times, I did lose a piece of tape. Always index that stuff with a marker or something on the inside of the glass so you know what you're doing to avoid these kind of issues. Night two, I switched to scopes and you can see I am right there in the middle of Ohio. I have got stuff coming at me. The weather was incredibly crazy. We're talking 30 to 45 mile per hour winds. As you can see right here, the wind chill was falling. It was like, you know, at this time, 17 degrees out and got even colder as the night went on. But I stuck it out out there and just kept on going, taking tests, doing little tweaks to the collimation. You'll see from this guiding just how crazy things were. So I was not able to guide. I limited my exposures to 30 seconds that night. We'll go over the impact of that versus what I was used to with my Rasa 8 or longer exposures. So yeah, it was a pretty tough night, that's for sure. But I stuck it out because I wanted to get this thing done and dialed in. 
in the end, I ended up firing off about 600 images, getting enough on the horse head for my first mosaic, getting some stuff on the jellyfish. Everything was great. Now we got to get out there and fine tune stuff. And speaking of fine tuning, take a quick look here at collimation and what I use to kind of help dial things in a little bit to this below. And what I'm using is Al's collimation aid. And what it is is just a simple screen overlay plan that you can adjust your collimation points. And if you got good seeing, you want to do this on the actual rings. You center this entire thing right there in the middle on the airy disc. And then you can kind of see you've got an inner, a middle, an outer ring. And you can see here that we are out of collimation here. We're spilling over right here. So you can see the shadows of my fingers trying to figure out what it exactly to do. And that's pretty much what you got to do is you got to loosen up a couple of these bolts at the same time and make adjustments. If you're out far enough with your hyperstar, if you're spaced out a millimeter or more, you you should be all right with just adjusting one at a time. But if you start off from a perfectly flat and smashed position, you're going to have to move two, if not three at a time to kind of give it some space. Star Zona recommends in their instructions to shim out to about 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters. I've seen online that people recommend using dimes. That is what I did. And that got me a lot closer and gave me push and pull wiggle room that allowed me to dial everything in here. So there's a link to Al's collimation aid in the description below. You want to check collimation on both sides of focus in and on the out. So that way everything should be matched up. Once you are, you should be officially collimated. Everything should look good. You can lock that baby down and you should only have to make minor tweaks down the road. So happy as can be, I fired up a couple sequences here on Nina. We took a hundred shots of the jellyfish and then we did a two panel mosaic, 200 shots each at 30 seconds on the horse head. And we basically have went through and merged those together and we'll go into pics in sight now and take a look at that. It's just amazing to think though, that I am back to collecting this much data in this short amount of time. It is just great. And I could not be more excited about my hyperstar experience right now. So we're going to take a look at some images here on pics in sight. And there's a couple things I will bring up. First of all, I definitely notice the loss of aperture from the Rasa 8 going to the C6. It's it's a, a definite thing. I think if I would have ran a little bit longer exposures on these setups, I can make up for that. We'll go over why I didn't. But I definitely personally can see that, you know, a 30 second exposure before on my Rasa 8, the entire screen would just light up. I believe we're going to have to pump that up maybe to about 45 to 60 seconds on this as well. We're also going to need to work on some backspacing still. We'll talk about that here. So after just a little bit of uh, deep processing and everything, this is kind of what I turned out with. This is actually the first time I've ever did a merge mosaic in Pixinsight, but it is one of the most powerful things that you can do with a Rasa or a Hyperstar because, you know, with, this is two panels, but you could do a four panel mosaic in no time. And it's just fantastic because of how fast it collects the light. Now I told you that I was battling weather and my mount has also given me some issues. So I was only using 30 second exposures. I wasn't able to guide. So therefore I wasn't able to dither and there's some walking noise and everything like that inside the images. Now, as far as a light gathering capability and everything, the image on the right is from my William Optics GT81, and those are 300 second, five minute exposures. That's the stack of all of them. That's about two hours and 45 minutes. Unfortunately, I had my rotation completely wrong with the Hyperstar, and I gotta remember how things flip and are oriented and everything so I can set that properly. But this is basically what I ended up with with my image in order to make things the same here. And if we take a look at what we got, you know, we can definitely see 
the time difference um, that we're going to have to make. You know, most people are in agreement that when you go from like about F5 to about F2, you're really only shooting at about five to six times as fast, which doesn't sound like a lot. A lot of people hear and throw out that 25 times faster. That works out if you're shooting at F10, not at you know, F 4.72, like I did here with my GT 81, but looking at these, and if we apply that five times, you look at, you know, five times 30, 150 seconds. So basically we are looking at a little over, you know, two minute exposures probably would have got the job done and give us this much information here. You can see all the nebulosity that we picked up over here. And we are just beginning to pick that up in the hyperstar image. And, you know, as far as the details and everything, we're starting to pick up some of that crispness and everything, but not like we have over here. And the other thing as well is we can see the star sizes are a lot bigger. Of course, you're never going to have smaller stars with a hyper star like you would on one of these refractors. But I do have some spacing that I need to take care of. I am going to go ahead and account for the actual filter in the backspacing. All my stars are pretty much pointing to the same area to say that I'm a little too close to the sensor. And I've read and seen some people actually discuss this as well, especially with the new version four. So right now I am setting at about 38.2 millimeters of back focus and stars owner recommends 38.9. So we're already a little bit short. I shoot with Idis filters. This is the NBZ filter. Their filters are about 2.5 millimeters thick. In general, the rule of thumb is to account for a third of that thickness. So we're looking at, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.78, somewhere around there. Add to that the difference that we're already at. So I am going to go ahead and throw about a millimeter and a half of shims on this setup and that should get everything better and dial us in my hfrs were in the high threes probably could have been a little bit lower because of the wind and the weather we just won't know until we get back outside and test but this is the best comparison i have right now as far as speed and everything else so that's it guys that's the end of this video and this part of the series in the next part we're going to come back we're going to try that different spacing. We're going to maybe tweak collimation a little bit if we have to. Hopefully my mount will hang on so we can get some longer exposures and see exactly what this can do. I have total faith that we're going to be able to fire stuff out. Now, keep in mind that those images were still only about an hour and 15 minutes or maybe an hour and a half each. So there is a ton more light that we can put into there. And, you know, that's 200 frames. Think about that. You don't want to really have hundreds and hundreds or thousands of frames or it's going to take all day for your computer to even process the thing. I did know that with my Rasa 8 though, I would typically leave and just shoot at 100 and it would do a really good job. So whether I need to shoot 100 and up the exposure or I need to shoot at 200 and up it a little bit less, we'll kind of get it all dialed in and figured out to find that right amount that we need to just crush the noise right off the bat so we don't have to be as aggressive with it and picks in sight and just make beautiful images the easy way like we like to do here on this channel so thank you very much please continue to subscribe we'll see you on the next video peace